the students take notes, preparing for the inevitable exam. And on this spring-like morning, it is also inevitable to daydream for one senior in the back of the class. The dreams carry an uncommon complexity. The international political system. I really don't know what separated me from others. So the big question I always ask is why? You know, why did my dream come true? Why did another, others come true? It is a legitimate question for this introspective All-American. What does separate Lionel Simmons? To Lionel himself, he's still about the same guy who grew up on the mean streets of South Philadelphia. It's been a heady ride of late, national stardom, the eyes of the NBA on his every move. It is largely a story of personal courage, of strength to see dreams as worth working for, and putting your faith in yourself. Lionel began to visualize his future at Southern High School. LaSalle teammate Bobby Johnson has been with Lionel since elementary school. Through high school, he was, you know, coming on to be such a, a great player that, you know, I, I mean, like, you know, he's all-American status. You know, he just didn't get the recognition in high school like a lot of other people did. The dream began to crystallize on a March day in 1986. A long-awaited matchup with Gratz and their star, Brian Shorter. On that day, Lionel would lead Southern to an overtime victory. But the day's most important news was in the mailbox, when Bobby and Lionel came home after the game. Lionel had narrowly missed the required 700 on his SATs on his earlier exams, but not this time. I was thrilled because Bobby, you know, we were all, I think he had got it before me, and I had to take it again. And when I passed that time, he, he, he was over there when I got the mail. And it was like a celebration because I wanted to come in and play right away because, you know, I think when you come in and have to sit out of here, I think you're stereotyped for your entire four years. You know, when you're on TV, I think the first thing a commentator says, he's a Proposition 48 student. I never wanted that title. On. Not that it's a negative thing, but it's just something I never really wanted to be on my back. So I wanted to make sure I did well. And once I passed, it was like, time to celebrate because, you know, I knew that I would come in and play right away as opposed to having to sit out. Yes, he could play, but where? Lionel had been heavily recruited by LaSalle University since 10th grade, but just three days after that Southern victory, head coach Lefty Irvin resigned. I feel this is really is in the best interest of LaSalle and uh, for me as a person. It was left for assistant uh, coaches Fran Dunphy and Joe Mahalik to keep the lines of communication open. The whole theme of the story is that, that Lionel should get really all the credit in the world for making the right choice. Um, I'm sure it was a little awkward. I mean, there were questions in, in everybody's minds. Who was the next coach going to be? And I think, um, obviously, as it turns out, this, this proved to be the right move. But, but even then, because of Lionel Simmons, LaSalle and uh, the people here in the administration at LaSalle, I thought they did a real good job in, in recognizing they had to do something real quickly. And again, obviously, they made just a, a fantastic choice. Um, and, and Speedy came along, and, and Speedy closed the deal in the end. The decision came to be made that the side would be the right school. And I feel as though with the new coach, I can come in, be a good player, playing Speedy Myers, and hopefully have a good college career. Starting it forward, a freshman, 6 feet, 6 inches tall from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. His most classic understatement, Lionel Simmons simply erupted. The Big Five and Conference Rookie of the Year that first season, he exhibited a versatility, a completeness. LaSalle truly had something special. The season ended with a trip to the NIT Finals, and the late 80s were already being titled as the Lionel Simmons era at LaSalle. The sophomore, six feet, six inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. By his sophomore season, he was Lionel Simmons' All-American forward. LaSalle posted 24 wins, the most since 1969, and returned to the NCAA tournament. He was Conference and Big Five Player of the Year. A junior, six feet, six inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. He would repeat those feats in his junior season, top the 2,000-point mark, surpass 1,000 career rebounds, First team All-American, a finalist for the coveted Wooden Award. His team would win 26, tying the school record. Last spring, though, 
Simmons faced another major decision. The NBA beckoned $2 million or more. He consulted the person whose opinion carried the most weight. I think whenever you make a decision as big as that one, you, you have to talk it over with your mom, I think. Well, when Lionel went to LaSalle, you know, it was for his degree. And I told him that this would be something that he would always have if he couldn't take it away from a broken leg or a bankruptcy or whatever. You couldn't take his degree from him. And I don't think that he would have missed all of this for the, for the world this year, you know, with the, trying to get the 3,000 points and everything. His senior year, you know, was the most important year in college, and I don't think he would miss it, even though he made the promise to me that he would finish his college career. But um, I coached him a little bit because I know it's important. You know, I know I dropped out of high school, went back and got my GED, and then raising a family, I couldn't get back into college, and I knew this it's hard to get a job without having a degree. Knowing that, you know, we would have a good team the following year, and knowing that if I just played the way I'm capable of playing, that the NBA would be there, and she got that across to me from a different point of view, and letting me know that, you know, basketball is good, but, you know, what you can get out of a diploma is just, you know, uh, tremendous, and by, by letting me know that, you know, that just led me to come back to, to LaSalle and, and finish up my education. He will complete his education with a degree in criminal justice this May. Adam Horowitz has hit you to senior, six feet, seven inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. Yes, the final ride on the L train has been sweet. Despite a cold start, an abscess tooth, nagging ankle injuries, Lionel has cashed in his chips, one by one, passing legendary names on the all-time scoring list. And just like Mom said, the NBA is still there. He's projected as a surefire first-round pick. He's viewed not in a specific NBA role, simply as a player. I tend to agree with that. I think uh, that's pretty much, you know, uh, breaking my game down in terms of not really excelling in any one area, but doing, you know, fairly everything well. And I think that you know, that's the mark of a player because you have to, to be able to be able to be able to shoot. You know, if you're wide open, be able to pass to the open man. At this time, everyone has to be a complete player because I think the more position you can play is advantageous for your career. And you know, that's what I've always worked on, trying to, to do a little everything to make me the complete player that I want to be. And so, the college basketball career for Lionel Simmons is about to end. Philadelphia fans have witnessed the entire metamorphosis. The sleek high school forward who stayed home and strapped a rebuilding basketball program to his ample back. He has achieved each goal while maintaining his grades. He's set to join the adult world now, his childhood fantasies all a reality. He still asks why he was chosen, why it's all come true. And Lionel Simmons knows there's only one way to share the dream. I've been blessed in, in so many ways that, you know, it seems like in order for me to feel good, I have to give something back. You know, I, I think that by talking to people, if I can help them, then, you know, that's a great deal because so many people have helped me. And by being a role model, I get that opportunity because, you know, people are always up in my face wanting to talk to me, wanting to hear what I have to say and how I became successful. So that is, you know, what I can give back to them, talking to them, you know, telling them positive things, having them do you know, what, what's right from wrong. And, and I think by having the opportunity to do that, it, it makes me feel good because I look at the, the number of people who've helped me, and I think, you know, all it is is someone talking to you, letting you know what's right from wrong and how to, to line up your priorities. And, and I've been able to do that, so hopefully I can, you know, touch a few people in, in terms of that. Went by uh, Larry Bird and Elvin Hayes as he climbs on up the list, Eddie. And then Danny Manning, you think, would go down. Might have gone down tonight. Obviously, he'll hang in there because they're doing a good job on Lionel Simmons. The big O from Cincinnati, 29. And Hersey Hawkins, the 76er from Bradley, 3,008 points. And if you project Lionel's average out, he could get it at home three games from now or on the road four games from now. He could wind up as the third all-time leading scorer in the history of Division I basketball. 